Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We gather in this sacred space today to celebrate the liturgy for the third Sunday in ordinary time. I invite everyone to please stand and share a greeting with one another. Our presider is Father John, assisted by Deacon Chris. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, All Praise and Glad Thanksgiving. Good afternoon. We begin with the sign of our victory, the power of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to discipleship. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your grace. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness. For there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burn in them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. among the people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Sometimes, in order to hear the voice of Jesus, we need to be called out of the ordinariness of life to experience the extraordinary. And that's what's happening in this evening's Gospel. Jesus approaches two brothers, Peter and Andrew, who are routinely doing what they do every day, which is casting their nets, Jesus asks them to come and follow him. The response is powerful. 
They left what they were routinely doing. They left what was familiar. They left what was secure. A little while later, Jesus approaches two other brothers, James and John, and he says the same thing to these fishermen who were doing something very routine as well, mending their nets so that they can continue with their job, which would put food on their table and clothing on the backs of their families. Yet the leaving behind of nets by James and John entailed something more than the tools and source of income, and entailed letting go of their father, with whom they worked, and at whose feet they probably learned the art of fishing. Was the response of these brothers to Jesus so radical in nature? Would they never return to their father or to their occupations as fishermen? Perhaps it was, but more likely the call of Jesus entailed a gradual shift to what is really important in life. It's almost like they had to separate from ties that bound them in order to hear the message of Jesus, which begs the question, what keeps us from hearing the voice or call of Jesus. What keeps us from hearing the voice or call of Jesus? Are we obsessed with our work, our relationships, and our routines? Are we sucked into our social networking, the gadgetry, uh, gadgetry of iPads and cell phones that we cannot hear the voice of Jesus calling us through our spouses, our children, in prayer, or others beyond our familiar circle. Perhaps we are in darkness. Perhaps our deafness or blindness to the call of Jesus is the result of disease or illness. What keeps us from hearing the voice or the call of Jesus? I was reading an article recently on the shortage of priests, and the writer was saying that the shortage must be seen in the larger context of vocations in general. That is, he says, certain secular vocations are also struggling, areas like nursing, medicine, social work, education, youth work. The vocational crisis, in other words, is part of a wider social picture that reveals the heart of our society. This heart lies in the fact that an external marketplace mentality has, re has replaced a sense of internal calling. An external marketplace mentality has replaced a sense of internal calling. He quotes a report about nursing, for example, which says, nursing's collapse is a cultural and spiritual one, a failure of the notion of charity and compassion, not the result of failed pay. In other words, a consumerist culture places its emphasis primarily on attending the right school, making the right connections in order to get the right job, the big money, and prestige. A consumerist culture. A vocational culture, on the other hand, is one in which people have a sense of being called to make life better. A sense of possessing a gift to offer. A sense of a mission to be accepted and completed a sense that they have to live a worthwhile life and do things that count on the human level, whether or not it brings them money and fame. If they are religious, they have a sense of God calling them regardless of the difficulty, danger, or lack of worldly rewards. This sense of vocation is at the opposite pole of society's meaning of success which is displayed only in terms of image, 
prestige, the letters behind one's name, and what we buy and consume. In a secular society, it doesn't get any better than that. And the dominance of that mentality is why we face a shortage in many critical areas and why society can so easily, without blushing, offer a baseball player $250 million to play ball and a caretaker of the elderly $15 an hour. And yet, truth be told, people are dissatisfied. We hear that all the time. It's commonplace for some to reach the top and say, is that all there is? There's an emptiness for people who have it all when that all does not include what I call the four C's, the four C's. Care, compassion, charity, and a cause larger than our own egos care, compassion, charity, and a cause larger than our own egos. Wise people, however, sense the deeper longing behind the materialism. They feel the void that consumerism is trying to fill, and they learn to appeal to their inner call to a vocation. For example, a recruiter from the Teach America program came to a nearby university a couple of years ago. This organization recruits the nation's best college and university students to go work in the most impossible teaching situations in our country. This recruiter from Teach America knew his audience of, we could say, hotshot ladder climbing students. So he looked out at the crowd in front of him and the front of the, stu the students that were in front of him and he began saying this. He says, I don't really know why I'm here tonight. I can just tell by looking at you that you are probably uninterested in what I have to say. This is one of the best universities in America. You are all successful. That's why you're here, to become an even greater success on Wall Street or Madison Avenue or in law school. And here I stand trying to recruit some people for the most difficult job you'll ever have in your life. I'm out looking for people who want to go into a burned out classroom in Watts and teach biology. I'm looking for somebody to go into a little one room schoolhouse in West Virginia and teach kids from six to 13 years old how to read. We had three t teachers killed last year in their classrooms. And I could tell just by looking at you that none of you want to throw away your lives on anything like that. On the other hand, if by chance there is somebody who may be interested, I've got these brochures up here and I'm going to leave them and we'll be glad to speak to anybody who is interested. Uh, the meeting is over. With that, all of the students jumped up, rushed the aisles, rushed down to the front and started fighting over the pamphlets, just dying to apply for Teach America. My friends, people are good and instinctive, instinctively look to something larger than themselves. I believe that we are hungry to give our lives to something more important than ourselves. We want a vocation more than a resume. It is a fact of life, not only that everything costs us something, but that in our better moments, we are even eager to pay the price. Shioni Sugahara was born on a day of new beginnings, January 1st, 1900. As a boy, he cherished the dream of becoming the Japanese ambassador to Russia. By the 1930s, he was the ambassador to Lithuania, just a step away from ambassadorship to Russia, his dream. He was on his way to a successful career, a big name on the international scene with money and prestige galore. Then a vocation, not a job, came unexpectedly calling. What happened was that one morning, a huge throng of people gathered outside his home. They turned out to be Jews who made their way across the treacherous terrain from Poland 
desperately seeking his help. They wanted Japanese visas, which would enable them to flee Eastern Europe and the Gestapo. Three times, Sugihara wired Tokyo for permission to provide these visas. Three times, he was rejected. Now came his moment of truth, his calling, so to speak, versus his job. He had to choose between the fulfillment of his dream as an ambassador and people's lives right outside his door. And he chose the latter. He dared to disobey orders. For 28 days, he wrote visas by hand, barely sleeping or eating. Recalled to Brit Berlin, he was still writing visas and shoving them through the train windows into the hands of refugees who ran alongside the train. Ultimately, he saved 6,000 lives. He lost his job, his fame, his money, his career, and he wound up humbly selling light bulbs, of all things. But he found his calling. Let me put it this way. Parents we know are fanatical about getting their children into the right schools, and children themselves kill themselves with overactivity in order to parlay an overstuffed resume into acceptance. Parents give their children every possible leg up advantage that money can buy. But my question is, or the gospel question is, the gospel question is, where is the equally passionate concern that children be moral and visionary and follow a calling rather than a career? The chaplain at Duke University writes, I have been a campus minister for over a decade. In that time, I have received only one or two phone calls from anxious parents saying, help, my daughter is drinking too much alcohol, or help, my son is sexually promiscuous. However, in that period of time, I have probably received a dozen phone calls from anxious parents saying, help, I sent, I sent my child to Duke to become a lawyer, and now my child has become a religious fanatic. And religious fanatic is usually defined as someone who wants to go and work in a Catholic nutritional program in Haiti rather than go to Duke Law School immediately out of undergraduate school. Friends, all that I have to say today is but a variation on today's gospel, the calling of Jesus' first disciples, which is a call to vocation, to discipleship. And that call continues to this very day we are a faith community with a sense of being tapped by God. Each of us has been given a vocation. We have been recruited by Jesus Christ. There is something we have to do before we die, no matter how small, that lifts us above ourselves. There is an urgency, no matter how deeply we have buried it, to answer a call. The Gospel simply asks, do you hear it? Have you answered it yet?
As we profess our faith, we entrust ourselves to the God who created us and redeemed us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As faithful followers of Jesus, we now offer our prayers for the needs of all people, confident that our prayers are heard. For the church, that we may have the freedom from fear and the trust to leave everything and follow Jesus' call to serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For openness to the word of God, that we may allow the scriptures to enter our hearts, bring us to a deeper relationship with Christ, and inspire us each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hope, that all who find themselves walking in darkness may be renewed in mind and spirit with the promise of life and wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are discerning a call to ministry, that God will help them hear the call and recognize the gifts they have and the ways to use them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians of all denominations, that we may strive to achieve the unity envisioned by St. Paul when he urged the Corinthians to have no div divisions among them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be raised to the fullness of life in God's presence. We remember especially Robert Brennan, Diana Cascais, Mary Wibblesman, Father Theodore Ospar, Leonard Brozowski, Jeanette and Arthur Palladino, Thomas Bresnitsky, and Pat Del Pret. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a few moments to add our own intentions in silence. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we place all our needs and concerns in the loving heart of Jesus as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. There is one collection today, envelopes for communica commun communicating God's word should be placed in the basket with your weekly offering. Please join in singing our offer to our song, Lord, You Have Come. <laughs> Oh, 
Please pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. Amen. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women who you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Father, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the courage to do God's will in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for a moment. We have a couple of announcements. The first, I was inspired at this Mass. God told me that he's a Giant fan. So... <laughs> I saw one person with a giant shirt on. Anybody who even attempted to come up to communion with a Philadelphia shirt would have been denied. <laughs> this weekend, we celebrate Word of God Sunday throughout the entire Catholic Church. In honor of that, we are giving away Bibles to anyone who may not own their own. So if you don't have one at home, we invite you to take one of the Bibles from the table that's in the narthex as you leave. And I'd like to invite Rosanda to come up and speak to us about what's called Baby Bottle Blessings campaign to benefit Inspire Family Life Center here in Warren, New Jersey. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for fa to, to Father John for inviting us uh, to your beautiful parish and giving us the opportunity to have a baby bottle blessings campaign here at St. Bart's. Um, my name is Rosanda. I am the co-founder and executive director of Inspire Family Life Center slash Inspire Women's Center. Inspire is a pregnancy resource center. As I mentioned, we're located in Warren. And our mission is to help any woman, help any family, uh, who is facing a difficult or a challenging pregnancy, ultimately guiding them uh, to make an informed choice and to really help them choose life for their children. And we do that by offering all free services. 
Uh, we have pregnancy testing at Inspire ultrasound so those parents, uh, those families can see that baby, can see the little toes, uh, can see that heartbeat flickering, just a vital piece of information for anyone who is struggling to make such an important uh, decision. We have nurses on board, licensed technicians, and we have so many volunteers. And our client advocate volunteers are trained to listen and to respond to the needs of whoever may be uh, sitting before them, whether it's a 17-year-old girl or a woman in her 40s. Um, we're trained to, to not judge, but to listen to their needs and again, to offer them a vision of hope and to give them that vital information again so that they can make a really a beautiful choice. We also have an, a magnificent baby boutique in the center. Uh, certain you know, churches have baby showers, we fill that up, and our moms get to go inside and choose what they would like uh, for their children. And we walk with them, not just through pregnancy, but even beyond. So, um, you know, when the baby's born, we welcome them with all kinds of material needs, diapers, wipes, anything that they may, that they may need, that clothing. Um, and then also, up until the age of five, again, we're walking with them on that journey. And Inspire is also there um, for women and men who have made decisions that they regret, abortion decisions. Um, and I'm one of them, that is, my, uh, that is in my past, and that is what inspired me to even be involved in this ministry. But we're there, again, not to judge, but to share that healing love of Christ and his just transformative divine mercy. Because ultimately, the work that we do is rooted in the love of Christ and the love that he has for each and every one of us. So no matter who walks in that day, again, whether it's that 17-year-old girl or that woman in her 40s or that couple that's just struggling, that just doesn't feel that they can do this, we know that God loves them all. He loves that child. He loves that woman. He loves those parents. And he has a plan for them just as he has a plan for us. We don't have to meet any eligibility requirements for God to love us. But just as Father John spoke so beautifully on a weekly basis, you know, we see woman after woman who wants to shut off that vocation of motherhood because it isn't the right time, because maybe she's too old or she's too young or she's too poor or she's in school or she's on a career path. Whatever it may be, these are the challenges, you know, that we're facing on a weekly basis. But because we know that nothing is impossible with God and that life is a gift and that he died for that mom and that baby, we know what his will is. And again, with the information that we give, with the love, with the compassion and the support, um, we try to do everything that we can to guide them. And our work is completely supported by the community, and that's where these bottles come in. Um, if you could please pick a bottle up, you could take it home, bring it home with you. You could fill it with cash, change, check. You can even make a gift online. Or if you'd like, uh, I'll be in the back, you can make a gift today. Your gift, no matter the size, will really make a difference in what we're doing on a daily basis with our ministry you know, serving, loving women, children, and families. Um, again, I can't thank you enough.